People in parts of Washington and Oregon got a bit of a scare yesterday when a cloud of ash was spotted blowing at the peak of Mount St. Helens. So we want you to take a look at it. So the USGS confirms high wind gusts near the mountain stirred up ash left over from the 1980 eruption. It attracted so much attention, the USGS put out an informational alert to calm any potential fears of another eruption. So we're getting emails and phone calls, um, both from pilots and from the public, just saying that they're seeing an unusual amount of ash today and they wanted to know if the volcano was erupting. It's definitely not erupting. Unlike the eruption 45 years ago, this ash did not travel that far and communities shouldn't see the ash falling from the sky. Joining me now is King 5's Rich Marriott. You saw him a little earlier. He actually worked within the restricted red zone until days before the eruption. Immediately after the eruption, Rich flew as an observer on the search and rescue flights over the area, over the devastated area. So here you are, Rich. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? And and I'm sure it brings back a lot of memories, even though it's 45 years ago. Well, you know, part of what it is too is that this this ash is so fine, uh -huh. and when it when the, when the before the mountain actually had its, its massive explosion, uh -huh. it was erupting. It was dumping a, a whole lot of this around the area. So yeah. we were collecting stuff. I mean, we were bit digging snow pits because my job was to forecast this mountain weather and the avalanche potential. Uh -huh. Because you've got all these scientists out there working on the mountain, and then it gets shake, shaken and things come down that wouldn't come down ordinarily. So we were trying to keep everybody safe out there. So we have to go out and dig down through this stuff to get down to the snowpack to see what's going on. It was a whole new forecasting problem because nobody really tried to forecast on an active volcano like that right. with people actually working there. So when we had the big explosion, then this was everywhere in the air. So we were there uh, on the, the rescue flights about four days after the eruption. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't too bad because we were in Toledo Airport, which is west of it, and we had the onshore wind, so it was taking the ash away from us. So first trip there, not so bad. Went back about a week later, and we had east winds. It brought all that ash from over the eruption area, like what you're seeing there. It, it brought that back over us, and it was everywhere in the air. It was in oh. the air everywhere at the Toledo Airport. And it was in your face and stuff. And we... Actually, as I recall, we didn't have masks. No? You know, it was, it was really pretty nasty. I know we left there and we had to drive to Portland after that. And we drove down with the headlights on in the middle of the day with this volcanic ash blowing across the roadway. Mm -hmm. And we flew out of there and flew down to South, with a job to do down in Southern Oregon. And <laughs> we stepped off the plane. You can breathe again. That's really good. But you can understand what was happening yesterday because yeah. this stuff is really, really light. I don't know. Let's see which camera and, we're going to use this for this. And this is from this is yeah this is we we picked this up right there ash. on the slopes of mount st helens is where this came from and i don't know which uh, camera is best for us oh to there use you here. go is that me over here so yeah. if you can see it on this but what we've been doing all day i won't blow it towards no, you okay <laughs> pretend i'm away. the wind from yesterday okay. we're doing this right here we go i, I mean, know if you, you can see, see that it. into the air yeah and it's interesting because down in the main in the studio when we've done this a couple times mm -hmm. it's now they're gonna have to they're not going to like me because they're going to have to mop. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's just kind of into everything right mm -hmm. now. And that was one of the problems. It's very much, uh, they say, like the, the dust that the astronauts encountered on the moon. It's yeah. this really, really fine grain dust that gets into everything. And it's hard to get rid of and it. And it's hard to get rid of it, yeah. But it was a fascinating. Yeah. It was obviously a fascinating time down there, both before especially. It was tragic afterwards. Right. But it was really a fascinating place to work and see this actual change in terrain that yeah. it, went, it went from being a very pristine, gorgeous, beautiful yeah. lake and, and uh, forest to this moonscape. And when we flew mm -hmm. over initially a few days after the eruption, there were huge chunks of ice the size of houses out there. There were steam vents everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it, it looked like you were flying into hell. It oh, really did. Literal, it literally. Like, literal I mean, it hell. really did. And yeah. Nobody knew what the mountain was going to do after that either. Mm -hmm. I know at one point there was a minor eruption, and we were flying in a Chinook helicopter, one that has the two uh, mm -hmm. props. And... He just, he took it and he dove almost straight down to get wow. behind, put a hill between us and the mountain because we didn't know what it was going to do. Uh -huh. It was just a fascinating time. And what do you remember the most vividly? I mean, I imagine the smoke, the ash. I mean, yeah. you have the oh, friendly yeah. reminder there, but. The well, the most vividly beforehand was mm -hmm. I, I met Harry Truman, who mm -hmm. was the, wow. yeah, the, 
the cranky guy that lived there at, <laughs> at, uh, yeah. at Spirit Lake. We mm -hmm. uh, got to meet him and his 20 cats or whatever, which was oh, pretty fascinating to yeah. talk to him because he'd lived there for a long, long time. But afterwards on the rescue mi mission, it, it was just, it was very eerie because we were flying, looking down, it was still pretty much overcast, but we were seeing like school buses that were off the road. We saw mm -hmm. human tracks. We never actually oh. saw, we never actually found a, a human during at least the flights that I was on. Yeah. And, but you see these human tracks out there. And we didn't really understand at that point what had happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, that mountain came down and pushed all the water out of Spirit Lake up into the mountains and then sloshed back in again. And so it was filled with all these logs. And you see in these pictures of these yeah. downed trees everywhere, they were just all laid down yeah. flat. And, War zone and stripped, almost, yeah. And stripped of everything. And it just covered such a wide area. It was yeah. just, it was truly fascinating. As scientists, what would you say we've learned most over the last 45 years? I mean, our our technology was good enough to also see it. We've back learned then. how to monitor the mountains mm -hmm. really well, so they're not going to surprise us as much as they did in the past, yeah. which is important. Yeah, that's super yeah. important. Yeah. Living in the West and the Northwest, yeah. Rich, as always, thank you so well, much for your you for knowledge me up. as well.